Today is the first Sunday in the season of Advent. We began our Advent journey this past Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. And now we have six weeks of Lent. Six weeks of a time of repentance, a time to look forward to Easter. It's a very ancient tradition, the tradition of Lent within the church. In ancient times, and still today, it is used as a time of preparation for those who are to be baptized on Easter Sunday. It is a time when we consider the three traditional Lenten disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving or charity. We use purple in the church. Purple is meant to be a sign of the king, the royalty of Christ. It is also meant to be a solemn color. It's a color used in ceremonies. Even to this day, if you recall, before she died, Queen Elizabeth occasionally would wear the royal crown with the velvet in the middle, and it was purple. So it's still a royal color. It is a time for, as I said, solemnity. But solemnity being solemn is not the same thing as depression or sadness. And we need to hear that word. Being solemn means being intentional, taking something seriously, being directed. It does not mean beating oneself over the head and crawling around on the ground like a worm. And we need to understand this. So today, we begin our sermon series, How to Lent. And today, we are going to start with how to observe a healthy Lent what we do and what we don't do. And this is very important, we'll get to why. Now, I want to start us off by reading the first verse that we sang in our opening hymn today. Awake our souls, away our fear, let every trembling thought be gone. Awake and run the heavenly race, and put a cheerful courage Lent is many things. It is a time, as I said, to take stock, to open our hearts before God, to genuinely repent. I want to be clear that Lent is not the only time to repent. Hopefully we do this whenever we sin, every day. But Lent is a specific season where we bring this to the forefront where we consider the goodness of God and ourselves in the light of the goodness of God. And we take, right from the beginning, our example from Jesus Christ. So think of our story today. Jesus facing temptation in the desert. Jesus was led out by the Holy Spirit into the desert to be alone, to be quiet, to take a break, to hear God, to be away from distractions. If Jesus did this in the first century when television and smartphones and cars and advertising didn't exist, how much more do we think we need this today? When so much is vying for our attention. Then, we have the temptation after 40 days, the period of Lent. And if you count, you're going to say to me, Lent is 46 days. Ah, but Sundays are feast days. We always remember the resurrection. So 40 days of Lent, 40 being the biblical number for a long time. Remember the ark, 40 days and 40 nights. Those of us who have been pregnant will tell you 40 weeks is forever. 40 days, Jesus goes. And at the end of it, Satan comes and tempts him. And we take our cue for our Lenten disciplines from how Jesus responds to these temptations. So you heard me mention the three traditional disciplines of Lent, prayer, fasting, almsgiving. They're directly related to these temptations in slightly different order. 
Jesus had been fasting. He was hungry. What's the first thing he's tempted with? You can turn these rocks to bread. Fasting. What is the second thing Jesus is tempted with? You can have all the riches in the world. Nope. Almsgiving. It's not about money. What's the other thing Jesus is tempted with? Worshiping the Lord your God. Prayer. Knowing where my attention goes. And so we also take on these disciplines during Lent. Great. So far, so good. The problem is we turn Lent into a necessity, into a demand. Sorry, I can hear myself ringing a bit, so I'm just moving the microphone. Oops, now I moved it too far. Um, we make Lent into a demand, a religious necessity. And it's not. I defy any of you to look in scripture and see where it says, thou shalt observe Lent in the habits and traditions of the Anglican communion. It's not there. Lent has been designed as a period that is entered into willingly, not forcibly. It is meant to be a time that is thoughtful and prayerful, not begrudging and, oh my gosh. It is meant to be a time, believe it or not, of thanksgiving, of being grateful for the sacrifice made by Jesus Christ, of being thankful for the goodness that God bestows upon creation, upon us. It is a time to be thankful that we are not doomed to eternal death. We are not bound by failure and sin and disappointment. Lent, at the end, is meant to be a solemn, joyful time. So how do we do this? First of all, if Lent, if the disciplines of Lent and the way people talk about doing a different type of devotion or a different type of fasting or trying new styles of prayer, if this is not helpful to you, don't do it. I mean that very seriously. If you are struggling with depression, don't. Put yourself in a position that threatens your mental health. I'm just going to let that sit there for a minute. We talk about fasting. Fasting isn't just about food. It's about giving up something. And I would remind us that when we first started, back in the early church, the habit of fasting, you gave it up forever. Because the concept was that you got rid of something that was taking your attention away from God. If you have food issues, don't do a food fast. Again, I'm going to let that sit there. This is not about beating ourselves up or hurting ourselves. We are not more holy if we get beaten down. That's not what Lent is about. Lent is about willingly, joyfully, thankfully, taking on disciplines of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving over and above to bring ourselves closer to God, to understand and know Jesus better. Let's go back to our gospel lesson. When Jesus was confronted by Satan, how did Jesus repel Satan? There was no arguing. There was no, go away! Ah. There was no logical discussion. 
It was very simply the word of God. Jesus quoted scripture. During Lent, we take on study, reading the word of God, letting it soak into <coughs> us, so that when we are in situations where we are challenged, we also don't need to be fearful or argue or bluster. We can just simply rest on the goodness of the word of God. So I commend these disciplines. Over the next few weeks, we're going to look at them individually. Next week, we'll look at prayer. The following week, fasting. The following week, almsgiving. The fifth Sunday in Lent, we're going to come back to the theme of joy. And then we hit Palm Sunday and into Holy Week. But today, I just want to go over these very briefly. If you don't know how to pray, or you do pray, but you get frustrated by it, this is a great time to practice, and I use that word intentionally, practice. Please don't decide that right now, this Lent, even though I've never done this before, I'm going to commit two hours a day to intense prayer on my knees, because you're going to fail. So don't do that. Instead, have a conversation. Just speak to God. Take an extra minute, set an alarm if you need to, and when that alarm goes off, you take a minute, just one minute, and sit down, and just breathe, and be quiet. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Use a prayer guide if you want to. Pray the Lord's Prayer every day. We don't need to do big, huge, fancy things. We can take small Fasting. If you've never done a food fast before, please don't start with 40 days of nothing. It's very bad for you. I put in the directions I sent out in the email, children should not fast, period. They need their food and their healthy snacks. If you have a medical condition, do not fast from food. If you have any questions, speak with your doctor. If you do feel called to try a food fast, again, start small, one meal. Let's say a lunchtime, one lunch. And instead of eating lunch on that day, just take that time that you would normally spend eating lunch in prayer. And for it to be a real fast, you don't then at one o'clock go stuff your face. But you start small. Or maybe instead of a meal, some people are called to give up Sugar, alcohol, something along these lines, meat. So please start small. Don't set yourself up for failure. But consider other forms of fasting. Let's try to fast from being impatient. Let's try to fast from being judgmental. How about fasting from a game on our phone that we spend way too much time playing? There are different kinds of fasts. And again, the idea isn't just that we give it up just for the sake of giving it up, but that we spend that time in prayer and contemplation. And then we come to almsgiving, charity. This is a really good time to look at the money that you give to the church and to whatever other charities you support. When we give alms during Lent and take that on as a discipline, we are talking about extra. So it is not taking money you regularly give and switching it somewhere else. It is about giving above and beyond what you already give. Please don't put yourself in debt doing this. Please don't decide that I need to be ultra holy and I'm going to sell everything in my house and give all my money away and now... I'm in danger of being homeless and my children don't have food. That's not what this is about. This is about being honest with ourselves about our blessings, financial, time, attention, and dedicating those to God. If you've never done something like that before, start small. Change in a box. An extra phone call to that relative who's lonely and drives you a little bit crazy, but really needs to be listened to. At the end
end of it, we come back to entering into these things willingly and thankfully. So two final things. This is important, not because Lent is required, not because it is a season that the church proclaimed and therefore you all need to do it. The reason it is important to think about being healthy and godly in what we do during Lent is that Lent is not, as I've said, about self-flagellation. God is not pleased with that. Nor is Lent about making us better than everybody else. Because we have a Lenten discipline. Please don't go to work and say, no. I can't have that donut because I'm fasting. It's not what Lent is about. Gospel reading from Ash Wednesday, Matthew chapter 6. Pray in private. When you fast, put oil on your head and celebrate. When you give, don't let your left hand know what the right hand is doing. It's not about showing off or being religious. And if we make this a legalistic thing, if there's any tendency in you toward a legalism with any of these practices, stop. Just stop. And instead, take some time to list all the things for which you're thankful. The second thing I want to say about the importance of why we need to be healthy is because we are thankful. This is a grace-filled period. This isn't about God being angry with us. It's about God drawing us closer, calling us, and wanting us to know Jesus better. And in that spirit of thankfulness, please be a little bit um, flexible. I'm going to give you a really practical example. It happened to me yesterday. Our oldest child came, took the grandmother shopping downtown, stayed for supper, brought dessert. Bought it downtown and brought it home to have dessert with us. Now, what was brought home for dessert is something from which I am fasting. So guess what I did? I said, thank you very much, and I ate it. Because Evan brought a gift out of the goodness of heart to share. And that is more important than me keeping the fast. Do you understand what I'm saying? Thankfulness. Willingness. Easy. And have a little bit of fun, too. If you're a person who likes candles, go get a bunch of purple candles. I bought purple sticks. They're just fun. I have six purple flowers here. For the six weeks of Lent, every week there'll be one left. Have purple flowers in your house. One day eat only purple foods. This is a time, yes, for repentance, to remember what Jesus did for us. But the point of this is to remember how much God loves us, the holy life God is calling us to, and the beauty and the wonder and the joy of the resurrection, which is, after all, where we are headed. So I commend a healthy Lent to you all. It is Sunday. Have fun today. Maybe for your Lenten discipline on Sunday, sit down and make a list of everything for which you are thankful. Enjoy this time in prayer, in solemnity, but also in joyfulness. I pray for all of us that we have a healthy and beneficial Lent. In Jesus' name.